Chapter 140 and 143. It's been a few days since the top ended with Universe 7 winning by a landslide, and everything played just how I remembered, 17 won and wished for the resurrection of every universe that got erased, though since he didn't specify, maybe Universe 13 through Universe 18 got brought back to life, however, I can think about that later. Currently, I'm on Beerus's planet meditating alone on the mountain, I would have preferred to train physically, but with my power, the only way I can effectively and efficiently grow in power still is through image training. I mean it's not bad or anything, but it's not my preference, right now I'm imagining myself fighting against Meruz, and even with using all of my power, I still can't touch him, but the worst part is this Meruz is only an imaginary one, the real one is probably much stronger. Sage Ha, that's enough for now, however, I do quite miss Meruz, haven't seen him in years, wonder how he's doing, though knowing him, he's doing just fine. Right now I don't have much to do, from my memories, Frisia will find Broly and have him attack Earth in a year, but after that, I have no idea what'll happen as the last thing I watched was the Broly movie, however, I did see pictures of a bipedal goat person that looked quite evil, but that's it, for all I know he could an ally. Sage no point in thinking about that stuff, besides all I care about, is the Super Dragon Balls and I can finally go and get them, well after a year, either way, I've almost completed my mission, which means our family can finally be whole again. After thinking about reuniting with Nala and Mia for a while, I get back to training, as now that I don't know what's going to happen in the future, I wish to be at my strongest for whatever ridiculous situation happens. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Sage dash, and that's the third one, though bringing them with me is very inconvenient, ha, huh, I'll leave them with 21, besides I need her help in crossing over to universe 6. It's been a little over one year since the top, and right now I'm in the process of collecting the Super Dragon Balls, which for starters I already have three of them, the three, seven, and one star Super Dragon Balls, however since I have nowhere to store them I would wrap my key around them like a net and drag them throughout the universe behind me while flying. Yes, I'm flying through the universe, with my power it's much faster than using a spaceship but not as fast as Wiss, though I'm not about to ask Wiss to help me gather the Super Dragon Balls. Before anyone asks, I didn't take Bulma's Dragon Ball radar, I thought about it but ultimately decided not to, mainly because I didn't know where she hid it and I didn't feel like scavenging through the entire capsule corporation looking for it, especially when I have a compass that'll work just fine in this situation. Sage Dash, 21, get out of my body so we can talk. After I said that, nothing happened for a few seconds but then I suddenly saw tiny pink particles leaving my body forming into a tiny 21 right in front of me. 21 Dash, yes. Sage Dash, TSK, stop playing stupid 21 you know the reason why I called you out, so do you plan to help me or not, don't forget we're still allies. Lucky for me she knew how important this is to me so she didn't mess around and immediately opened a portal besides me with a wave of her hand, the portal continued growing in size till it was the size of a planet, big enough to allow the super dragon balls to fit. Following behind the miniature 21 into the portal, we arrive in a different dimension with colorful looking marbles varying in size everywhere in the sky, at least they look like marbles from where I'm at, though when I looked back at the mini 21, she was gone and in her place was the true 21. 21 dash, like my little lair, got it after defeating a weird creature that lived off negative energy, it was quite annoying to kill it as it could warp reality to its liking in this dimension. Sage dash, it's fine, anyways I didn't come here to admire your lair, can you send me to universe 6? 21 dash, oh my, you've really become more amiable than I remember, mm, are you really my cupcake? Grunting in annoyance, I smack her hand away which was trying to touch me. Sage dash, I can get angry if want me to, 21. Now, will you send me to universe 6? 21 dash, even if we're allies, we only plan to help each other when it comes to the problem of Demogra, so why should I help you with this? Sage dash, how about this, if you help me, I won't destroy this dimension, is that a good enough incentive for you? 21 dash, hee hee, that's the cupcake I love and know, however, I will help you, though you will owe me one. Sage dash, whatever I don't care, hurry up and go set up the machine, I'll bring the super dragon balls inside. Ignoring 21, I walk back out of the portal and start transferring the three planet-sized dragon balls through the portal, after 5 minutes I finished and now inside the dimension, you could see three giant orange spheres with stars in them floating. Heading to where I sense 21's key when I arrive I see the same big machine we used to teleport to Toki Toki City, it looks already powered up and ready to go. Sage dash, so is it ready? 21 dash, yeah it's ready, now just stand in the middle like last time and I'll activate the machine, then you'll have arrived in universe 6. Nodding my head, I make my way to the machine and stand in the middle, 21 who is holding a remote presses a button that makes the machine operate, and just before I'm transported I hear 21 say something. 
21 dash, I hope you enjoy my little present. I'm then thrown through a substance similar to a glass wall, before suddenly arriving in the void of space, I was curious what 21 meant by present as I didn't see anything except for stars light years away. Though I started feeling my body trying to stretch apart almost like a noodle along with an intense level of gravity I'd never felt before, the worst part was that the strength of the gravity continued to increase incredibly quickly. When I looked around to find the cause of this, all I saw was blackness, except for the view in front of me. Sage blackness, intense gravity, and my body getting stretched apart, I think this is what Bulma described as what would happen if a human was sent inside a black hole. Hmm, I think I might still destroy that dimension. I needed to get out of the black hole as every second that passes caused the gravity around me to increase exponentially and while I'm pretty confident of being able to resist extremely high levels of gravity at full power, I don't feel like testing that theory out right now. Transforming, I released all of my energy in a single burst to destroy the black hole, but instead, I noticed it absorbed all of my energy. I was slightly surprised, as the amount of energy I expelled was enough to destroy a couple of stars, seeing how it didn't explode, I tried again except this time I expelled far more energy than last time. Surprisingly it still managed to absorb all of my energy, now I was starting to get annoyed, so I started freely expelling my key until the black hole could no longer absorb any more. After 10% of my key reserves were absorbed the black hole stopped eating up my key, but what I didn't expect was for it to suddenly start shrinking at a rapid pace, catching me by surprise as I don't know what was happening. The black hole eventually shrunk to a small enough size that I could no longer fit inside of it and I quickly got out as I don't know what it was about to do. While looking at the tiny spherical black hole the size of my palm, I reached my hand out to hold it, however, right when I did my instincts warned me of danger and after the black hole starts turning bright white, then out of nowhere it exploded and since I'm right next to it I took the brunt of the attack while not even managing to defend in time. As I got sent flying through the universe at an incredible speed, I watched in the distance as the explosion trailed right behind me while practically devouring every planet and star the explosion come in contact with. I didn't care that it was destroying planets as none of those planets supported life, but right as I was thinking that, I quickly flew by a planet that I could sense life on. Sage for fuck's sake, why did I have to think that? I'm really tempted to rip through dimensions till I find 21 and kill her, if she didn't do this I wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. Now personally I wouldn't care if that entire planet was destroyed along with all life inhabiting it, but I'm not so cold-hearted that I would do nothing when I could stop it, especially when it's my problem to begin with. Quickly stopping my momentum, I fly right towards the planet where I sense life on it, and luckily I got there before the crazy giant explosion could devour it. Seeing how it's about to reach where I'm at, I power up and expel my key towards the explosion to stop it, and I must say while the amount of power it had wasn't too extreme, coupled with the momentum it gained, I almost didn't manage to stop if before reached the planet, especially because I had to be careful and not let any of the explosion slip through the net I made with my key. Once the momentum was finally dispersed, I released a sigh of relief as I pushed it back to where it came from. Sage Ha, I must say spending time on Earth has really softened me a little bit, if it was before, while I would have done the same, it would be because Nala would tell me to, not of my own free will. Shaking my head, I pull out the compass and start flying in the direction it's pointing, on my way to acquire the Super Dragon Balls of Universe 6. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. After a few weeks of flying around the universe gathering all of the Super Dragon Balls, I finally managed to acquire them all and transport them into 21's dimension. Was I ever worried that 21 would steal the Super Dragon Balls and use them for herself, not really, don't forget even though 21 is selfish and intelligent, she isn't someone who would stoop down and wish for power from Super Shinran, she has her own pride, however, I was worried that she might hide them so I couldn't use them, though I'm lucky I was wrong. Gathering the remaining Super Dragon Balls in Universe 6 was quite easy as they were usually just floating around in the middle of nowhere, though when I was grabbing the last one, I came across Kampa who seemed to also be collecting the Super Dragon Balls. Of course, we got into a little altercation and I returned to 21's dimension with the final Super Dragon Ball after giving him a good beating, I did say I was going to beat up Kampa when I got more powerful than him, honestly though it wasn't even a fight, he couldn't even touch me let alone fight back. Something I'm curious about is their hockey key, Kampa never once used it during our fight, he only used god key while getting beat up, and it's not like they only use hockey key under special situations or something as I've seen Beerus use it a few times, though the amount of power he used was incredibly tiny, so I assume destroyers can't use hockey key to make them even stronger than they are with god key. Don't know why, that's just how it seems. 21 dash, so are you ready sage, or not, because I'm not doing this again. Sage Dash, I've been ready for years, just summon him already. 
21 looked at me slightly annoyed before walking forward before the seven floating super dragon balls and started summoning super Shinran as 21 is the only person I know who can speak the language of the gods, in fact before this I didn't even know she could. 21 dash, asterisk god language asterisk come forth, dragon of the gods, and grant my wish pretty peas. The same thing happened when Beerus and the Grand Priest summoned Super Shinran, lighting, bright light, and a giant golden dragon. Super Shinran dash, T.O. who has summoned me, state your wish. I didn't need to tell 21 what to say, as I already told her several times before what to say since I didn't want a mistake to happen and then I have to wait another year to see my baby girl. 21 dash, asterisk god language asterisk resurrect me a Naga, an ancient scion Naga hybrid, the daughter of the ancient scion sage and the Naga Nala Naga. Super Shinran Dash, this is impossible as she is still alive, state a different wish. When I saw Super Shinran speak instead of doing his glowing eyes, the worst possible situation I could imagine appeared in my head. Sage that's impossible. He can restore back erased universes, yet you're telling me he can't bring back my da dash. 21 Dash, Sage. I got broken out of my nightmare by 21 who was looking at me annoyed. 21 dash, finally, he said Mia is still alive, so do you want me to wish for her to come here or not? I thought she was lying as how could Mia still be alive, but I didn't care, as long as I can see Mia again I don't care about the specifics. Sage dash, yes. 21 dash, okay then, no need to yell. God language teleport Mia Naga to our current location. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Hearing the magent's request, the projection of my body starts glowing its eyes red, while my true body, me, has just broken out of our multiverse and is currently flying through the void that all multiverses and universes reside in. Super Shenron found her energy, now let's quickly fulfill this wish, staying in the void is not a pleasant experience. Arriving just outside the multiverse where I sense the being's key I'm supposed to bring back, however, when I found out which multiverse it was, I was annoyed as I dislike interacting with the king of all of this multiverse, though speaking of the void devil. Forming right in front of me is a humanoid body made entirely out of energy, the being has no gender and no face, but the power it's radiating is equal to mine. Presence dash, Shinran, what are you doing here? Super Shinran dash, do not play dumb with me presence, you know why I'm here. I've come to bring back the one from our multiverse. Presence Dash, took you long enough, her existence has caused a lot of annoying problems to happen within my domain, and if it wasn't for her being from the multiverse of where Dragon God Zalama originated from I would've killed her the moment she appeared. When he finished speaking he reached his hand into his multiverse and when he brought it out I saw the being I came here for frozen in time. Quickly taking her, I wrap her in my energy to protect her against the destructive properties the void has to any living being, taking one last look at presence, I turn around and make my way back to our multiverse. When I arrived, I sent her to the location of where my projection was and continued what I was doing before I was summoned, sleeping. Underscore underscore underscore. Underscore underscore underscore. Super Shinran Dash, your wish has been granted. Right when he said that, I saw my little Mia standing right in front of me, I didn't care about anything else and quickly flashed in front of her and scooped her up into my arms. Mia dash, father. While hugging her tightly, I could hear her calling out to me, but I was too preoccupied to reply to her, though she eventually started attacking me, however, all her efforts were useless as she couldn't harm me. After what must have felt like hours to her, I finally let go of her and saw how she backed away from me, probably not wanting to get stuck in that hug again. Mia dash, what the hell dad? What was that for? We were like that for more than an hour, do you know how tightly you were squeezing, it felt like my bones were getting crushed. I ignored all her complaints and laughed in response, though when she realized I wasn't listening to her complaints, she started looking around and noticed 21 in the distance. Mia dash, hmm, pink body, tail, weird clothes, white hair, aren't you that evil 21 my father told me about? 21 dash, why yes I am, mind telling me what your father told you about me? Mia Dash, I don't remember what he said it was a long time ago, all I know is that you guys fought. Coming up from behind, I grabbed Mia by the tail and threw her onto my shoulders, while I used my tail to connect with her tail, it was something we always do whenever I carry her like this. Sage Dash, alright that's enough interacting with 21, you've just returned, so I think it's time for us to go and visit Nala. Mia Dash, yay. Oh, I also have some notes for mother that I think she will like. Sage Dash, we can worry about the notes later, though I bet Nala will be happy to read them. Hurry it up 21, we're in a hurry. 
Walking onto the middle of the space-time machine, Mia watches how the machine operates before we suddenly appear in a completely different place, which is once again in the void of nothing that we call space, luckily this time we didn't end up in the middle of a black hole. As we float in space, I try searching for any familiar key signature, and sadly, I didn't find one, but I kinda expected something like this would happen knowing 21. But jokes on her as that doesn't matter, as long as I'm in my original timeline, I'll be able to use the teleporter Nala engraved onto my bracers. Holding onto Mia, I press the button and a pinkish wormhole appears right in front of us, stepping through, Mia and I arrive inside Nala's secret lab, with Nala's key close by, which seems to be coming right around the corner. Nala dash Mia. Nala came flying from around the corner straight towards Mia with a giant smile on her face while her eyes were full of tears, she grabbed onto Mia and coiled up around her as if to protect her. Once again Mia tried to claw her way out, but she obviously didn't use her full strength as Nala isn't that physically strong, so Mia didn't wish to accidentally hurt her, though when Mia was about to break free, Nala quickly created a rune and placed it on Mia's body which caused her to instantly stop moving and just lay there limp. Nala Dash, where do you think you're going, I haven't seen you in almost two years, so you're going to stay here with me till I'm satisfied whether you like it or not. You could tell Nala was serious as she turned all snake mode on Mia with her dilated eyes, sharp fangs, and tongue showing, and Mia seeing that just closed her eyes in acceptance while letting Nala do what she wants. They stayed in that position until they went to sleep, as I watched them I smiled before quickly rummaging through the lab to find a camera which I did after a while, taking a couple of pictures, I put the camera down and lay next to them, drifting off to sleep as well. Underscore 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 when we woke up we went to our spaceship, which is actually our home, and ate breakfast, once that was done, we had Mia tell us of her adventure on this other earth, and I must say it wasn't that impressive, though I'm happy for that as I didn't wish my daughter to be in unnecessary danger, especially if I or Nala wasn't close by. Nala Dash, so you were on another earth with humans, yet it was vastly different from our earth, hmm, this is quite interesting, but I can think about it later because while it has only been a month or two for you, it's been over a year for us dear, so you're not going anywhere. That means you too Sage, now that we are reunited, we are going to spend time together as a proper family would, understand. Neither I nor Mia dared to decline Nala, besides I felt the same way as Nala, and while Mia didn't spend as long as we did away from each other, it was her first time being alone for that long, so I'm sure she wouldn't mind spending time with us again. Nala dash, great, alright then you two go get changed, we are going to have a family outing. We barely heard what she said as she was already slithering away in the distance, probably excited to spend some time with us once again, I didn't bother changing as these are actually the only pants I own, well these are the only pants that don't easily get destroyed during battles, they also have a function of repairing themselves so I've never bothered getting another pair, however, while Mia's clothes have the same function as mine, what she's wearing is her training clothes. As I watched Mia get up and walk to her room, I stayed sitting and waited for Nala to finish up because she usually takes a long time for no reason, Mia returned after a minute, and sadly here comes the waiting game. Half an hour later, Nala finally returned wearing what looked like a specially made human sundress, a large floppy hat, big sunglasses, and a mini purse, Mia didn't have anything special just some black pants and a small crop top. Like me, Mia hated wearing anything on the upper body, but Nala vehemently refused to allow Mia to walk around half naked, so Mia wears this, although it's called a crop top it's really just like a couple of inches of cloth covering her chest, though Nala hates it, she eventually gave up as no matter how much she argued with Mia she never wore anything more than that. Nala dash, alright guys, let's go and have fun, also no powers okay, we are going to try and spend time like a normal human family. Sage dash, tsk, lame. Mia dash, tch, boring. Since Nala prohibited us from using any powers that a normal human has, we were forced to drive there in a car, none of us have ever needed to drive a car as we could just fly around, but apparently, Nala said driving a car is like flying a spaceship, you just have to be more careful. Nala was driving, I'm sitting in the passenger seat and Mia is sitting on my lap, both of us are bored from how slow we were moving, but I didn't say anything when I saw how happy Nala was, and Mia didn't open her mouth probably because she didn't wish to be scolded. After half an hour of slow driving and constantly stopping because of the stupid human traffic rules, we parked, finally arriving at our destination though it looked weird. It was standing high in the sky with the shape of a mushroom while a spiral tube circled around the stem. Nala Dash, alright we've arrived, this place is called Dreamland, it's an amusement park that's meant for a family to enjoy time together. Getting out of the vehicle to go to this amusement park, which would have taken us less than 10 seconds to arrive at if he flew, we walked through the parking lot and noticed that several groups of families were also heading to Dreamland, though most of them looked like normal humans. 
once we got close to the base of the building, we saw a line of people at the entrance which we sadly had to wait in if we wanted access to Dreamland, after several minutes of waiting in line it was finally our turn. Employee dash, tickets for adults are 25 zenny, tickets for children are 12 zenny. Nala dash, two adults and one child, here is 62 zenny. Employee dash, thank you and have a wonderful time at Dreamland. When Nala finished paying, we walked toward the entrance of the spiral tube that was right behind the employee's desk, when we arrived three seats appeared from a compartment undeath the tube, and a mechanical voice instructed us on what to do. Sit down in the seat, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We all followed the instructions and sat down, though Nala looked quite ridiculous with her tail wrapped around the seat, once we were all buckled up, we started accelerating through the tube, our top speed wasn't that fast but it was probably about the same speed of the vehicle we used to drive here. As we were going up we could see the scenery of the city down below and while I'm sure that would be quite the view for a normal human, it wasn't anything special to any of us. When we arrived at the top, a hatch opened allowing us to finally see Dream Land the amusement park, once our momentum fully stopped we unbuckled and got up from the chairs, which went back down into another compartment. While looking around at all the happy and excited humans enjoying their time, we quickly joined the traffic of humans and started walking around Dream Land while looking at all the various activities available. You could see people in minicars ramming into each other, a giant spinning wheel standing up straight, what looked like a train driving on rails through the sky, several places to eat, and tons of other things to do. Sage Dash, so dear, since you've planned this out, what shall we experience first? Nala Dash, hmm, well let's start off with something that doesn't seem too crazy, like that over there. Mia and I both look to where she's pointing and see an old rundown mansion, with a sign hanging above it. Mia Dash, Haunted Mansion, the hideout of ghosts. Is this supposed to be a scary place? Sage Dash, don't know, but on the bright side at least it doesn't have a line like all the other activities we saw, so let's go. When we arrived all we saw was a green carpet leading the way and an arrow pointing towards the open door, we didn't dally and walk through the door, though when we did the door slammed shut, causing a loud sound to echo through the mansion. Nala Dash, ee yek. Nala, a grown woman who seen tons of battles throughout her life, got scared by a door closing, though the worst part about this is she's the only one who got scared. Sage Dash, Nala, a door closed, calm down, and can you unwrap yourself from around me? Nala Dash, ah, uh, yes, sorry, I was just surprised that's all. Once Nala had composed herself, she unwrapped herself from around me and got back onto the ground while trying to look as professional as possible, though I noticed she didn't leave from my side. Shaking my head, Nala and I follow behind Mia as we make our down the path laid out for us, while turning a corner into a hallway, something ugly pops out from the ceiling with the intention of scaring us, though Mia and I just look at the creature in boredom, however that couldn't be the same for Nala. Nala dash, ah, monster. I had to hold Nala down to stop her from attacking that human disguised as an ugly monster, because while Nala may be physically weak, that's just from my standpoint, compared to a human, Nala would be able to crush a human head quite easily and although Nala spends most of her time studying magic or technology she does do some physical training, just nowhere near as an intense as mine and the reason she even trains is because of a human quote she read somewhere that said, a strong body will house an even stronger mind. Now I don't know if that's true but I'm not going to tell Nala to stop training. When Nala finally calmed down, we once again continued on the path, though this time I made sure to hold Nala's hand, had to be careful in case she suddenly starts attacking again. The adventure went on for a while with various different jump scares from zombies to monsters, to ghosts, to even normal humans with random weapons, and each time Nala got scared, and I don't even know how it happened, considering she should have been expecting them to appear. By the time we left the mansion, Nala was completely wrapped around my body, with her head dug into my neck, while refusing to let go. Only when we left the mansion did she finally unwrap herself from me. Nala dash, l let's take a short break first. We agreed as Mia and I could see Nala still hasn't fully regained her composure, though while walking we passed by a booth with screens that showed pictures of us experiencing the haunted mansion, of course, had to go and print some pictures as how could I not, Nala's scared face is quite adorable but mainly funny. As I looked through the several photos I chuckled to myself before hiding them in my pockets and quickly catching back up with Nala and Mia who have sat down at some benches. Nala Dash, what took you so long Sage? Sage Dash, hee hee, nothing, just saw something funny. 